Welcome to Sunday Sessions, episode 20, where we talk about tips and tricks on how to grow your Amazon business. My name is Eric Castellano. Welcome to the channel if this is your first time joining. Excited to have you here, amped up. Just enjoying this beautiful, what day is it? I don't even know, because it doesn't matter. Every day is a beautiful day. So if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you smash that subscribe button, catch you inside. The way this works is a live Q&A, so you ask your questions and I answer them. It's that simple, that straightforward. Excited to have you here. If you're just joining, let me know where you're from. I wanna know where you're from. We got some questions rolling in, Chia. Let me pull them up on my other phone. Is it harder to buy now because of COVID, delayed shipments? Yeah, if you're getting stuff from overseas, it's absolutely harder to buy. But the beautiful thing about Amazon Wholesale is you source 99% of your products domestically. So right here in the United States or whatever country you're from, you'd be purchasing those products within the country that you live in. So it's really a game changer because you don't have to deal with those overseas shipping because a lot of times the products that you're selling are manufactured right in the country that you live in. So it's huge. It's time saver, game changer, money saver. It's, it's, I think it's the best Amazon business model that exists, especially if you're trying to capitalize on a quick return on your investment and scale quickly, right? Like, let's just put it this way. If you were to start a private label product right now, do the research, place the sample order, wait for it to ship, place the final order, then produce it, ship it from overseas, you're looking at five to nine months lead time. Now don't get me wrong, there's a lot of great money in private label. You can sell your private label business, you know, for a, a multiple which is pretty exciting, pretty amazing. But initially, I would encourage wholesale is definitely the way to go. Then when you start generating some cash flow, you could be like, all right, I'm gonna take this 15 grand and I'm gonna put it into this private label product. Because you got the cash flowing in, you got the money flowing. Really, it's all about the cash flow. Cash flow is king. See what else we got going on here. How we feel about them crypto markets right now? Shit just dropped crazy, everything's on sale. I just scooped up a couple grand more worth of assorted cryptocurrencies, things that I was a little down on needed to kind of cost average in at a lower price. So I encourage you to do that as well. You know, the way I feel, a lot of these, um, you know, a lot of these meme coins and tokens, they're gonna disappear in a couple of years or even a couple months or a couple of days, right? They're not here for long term. But if you find projects that you believe in, then go all in on those projects and just hold them. Hold them, try not to look at it for, you know, six months. I know it's hard. I tell myself all the time, like, I'm not going to open my app today. I'm just not going to look at it. You know, like last night up like 70 grand today. 45 so it's like it's stressful when you look at it all the time but if you believe in it and you just don't open it because you know in the long term it will pay off that's really where the game change happens appreciate you marines official austin texas in the house got some houston cats up in here okay phoenix nebraska cali trying to join the group but haven't heard back i guess i didn't have make the cut yeah so if you submitted your application there's a few things we review the first thing being your financial situation right so if you answered that you don't have money to invest in yourself or you have less than a couple thousand dollars to invest in yourself we will not call you back it has nothing to do with you it's just that we expect the people who are willing and able to learn from us we expect them to invest in us and also invest most importantly in themselves Right? Because if you're not willing to dish out some investment money in order to learn, this shit ain't free here. It's just not free. You know, the other day I got on a phone call with, uh, we created a new program we're going to be dropping in a, a couple weeks. And uh, the guy reached out. We had a great phone call. I was super excited. We scheduled a follow up phone call. And like, this is just business talk here, right? So I'm talking to you like I talked to Sebastian or anybody else I'm in business with. And he sent me an email. And he's like, hey, for, for X amount of money, I want you to, I, I would really want, you know, your suppliers, your vendors. And like, what? Like my head almost literally exploded right there. My head almost exploded because for X amount of money, right? Couple tens of thousands of dollars, you want the suppliers and vendors that generate $50 million in sales revenue a year. 
It made absolutely no sense to me. That'd be like reaching out to Facebook, saying, hey, Facebook, I'll give you X amount of money, but I want your code for Facebook, right? I want all of it. I want all your code so I can go build my own Facebook. You know, like that's not how it works. Like literally, I, I don't understand people sometimes what goes through their head. Cause from like a business standpoint, and I guess really they don't understand. And that's okay that they don't understand because they're at a, a different level than the level that we're at. So I guess they see this business model that we're doing, right? And they think to themselves like, oh my God, if I had their suppliers, I would be able to crush it. But I'm not gonna give you our suppliers, but what I will do, I think is even better. I will show you every step and every process that we use to find the same suppliers that we do business with, right? Because I can't just hand them to you on a silver platter, not for X amount of money. Right, maybe a hundred times that X amount of money. Sure, I'll consider it. But it's like this this is the foundation of our company. And it's important for you and myself to separate emotions from business because instantly when I received that email, I got very emotional, right? Because I was angry, I was frustrated. Like, who does this person think they are to think that at this this amount of money I'm going to give away? basically everything that I've built in the past eight years. Like, absolutely. So I got very frustrated and I had to remember that, like, at the end of the day, people, some people aren't just gonna get it. Not everybody is going to be a good fit for me to, for me to help them. Not everybody's going to fit that criteria and that's okay. And when you begin to recognize that in any business that you're in, like not everybody's going to end up being a customer. But when you believe in your services, Regardless of what you're offering, when you believe in your services and you're passionate about what you're doing, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, right? Because your customers will seek you out. They will hunt you down and they will find you and they will want to do business with you. And those are the people that I'm trying to onboard into our program because those are the people that are willing to take action and willing to commit themselves. You know, just the other day, and then we'll get back to the questions here. Just the other day, another guy joined the program. You know, we have a 10 day refund policy. We have out of over 400 students, we have three, maybe four refunds, right? Because what we teach is legitimate. And uh, I just knew this guy. I almost wanted to tell him on the phone, but once again, my emotions, you know, I'm a nice guy, I gotta, you know, give him an opportunity. But on the phone, I wanted to tell this gentleman, like, listen, this isn't for you. I don't want your money, you're not ready yet. Call me in six months, you know? But he insisted that I sign him up for the program and what happened? Three days later, he's like, hey, this this isn't, he reached out to our support team. Hey, this isn't really for me. It's not what I expected. It's like, what did you expect? Like you get access to some of the largest wholesalers in the world with weekly calls and, and all the information. I was like, and like, I don't know what you expected, but that's not for me to decide, you know? So that's just a little tangent. That's what happens up here on a day to day, like little things like that. Inflation is going up 6.2%. How will that reflect on Amazon wholesale business? So as the dollar decreases in values, it will reflect accordingly on the Amazon marketplace because it's happening across the country, right? It's not like it's just happening in New York City or it's just happening in Florida or it's just happening in Montana. It's happening everywhere. So the prices will reflect according to that inflation. What legal docs do I need to start wholesaling? So you just need to, what I suggest is uh, register a business. I suggest LLC, LLP, right? Limited liability company. It, it protects you from any liabilities. It separates your personal and your business finances, which is huge. And that's pretty much it. That's it. Once you have that, you can start opening wholesale accounts. I know I have a wholesale business. Unless they're from the state that I live in, which is New Jersey, I don't even want to see their resale certificate mm -hmm. because that's what my CPA told me to do, right? So a lot of these companies, they're not going to ask for it, but it's good to have it because most of the companies are. So you just need an EIN number, which you'll get when you register your business in the state that you live in. Marines official said, bro, I'm doing FBM, but want to shift FBA. Any tips? Yeah, send your first shipment in. Don't get caught up in the... Listen, FBM is great for growing a business initially. It's great also when you don't have a lot of knowledge, right? A lot of people, they stick to FBM 
them out of fear of branching out into something new. Because FBA is completely different. You're sending your products to Amazon. You're putting in SPD or LTL or FTL shipments. Most likely if you start, you'll be doing SPD, which is small parcel delivery shipments through you know, UPS or uh, USPS. So it's different. But the only way to get your feet wet is to jump in. So you gotta take the initiative. You gotta make that decision like, okay, I know I'm buying these products and I can list them FBM, but I wanna try FBA. So what I'm gonna do with this shipment is I'm gonna send, you could say, I'm gonna send half of it FBA and I'm gonna send the other half. So when it's while it's waiting to get sent and received at Amazon, I'm gonna send the other half FBM. I'm gonna list them and sell them to the customer so I could still make money and make sales while the FBA inventory is waiting to be received. Also, if you are gonna do the FBA switch, I, I suggest waiting till at least after December 15th, maybe after just January 1st, because right now the FBA centers are super overwhelmed. So you're gonna have a bad taste in your mouth if you start right now. You're gonna have a bad taste in your mouth because your shipment's gonna take a little longer to get there and you're gonna be like, FBM sucks. You know what? <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't, it's changed my life. This is like, today we received 60 pallets, 60 pallets, what's that? It's about three full truckloads we received of inventory today. All of that will be out of this warehouse and on its way to Amazon by Friday. All right, today's Wednesday, I believe. Yeah, today's Wednesday. So Wednesday, we got our first truckload this morning at 9 a.m. That full truckload is already packaged and loaded onto an FTL full truckload shipment going to Amazon tonight. And then the remaining two truckloads will be processed on Thursday and Friday. And all of that inventory received today will be out of here by Friday, with the exception of a few straggler products that will probably get processed on, on Saturday and go out Saturday evening. So it's just like rinse, wash, and repeat. I get a lot of returns because of glass, okay? products come broken. I put a lot of bubble wrap. Any advice? Yeah, so it depends really how you're packaging these products. What you wanna do if you have multi-packs, so two packs, three packs, six packs, 12 packs of glass items, is you want to bubble bag each individual jar and then put each bubble bag jar into a larger, whether you're just gonna poly bag it or put another po uh, bubble bag over it. And the reason why we suggest using bubble bags is just way more efficient than getting those big rolls of bubble wrap. It's just those big rolls of bubble wrap suck. I used them for years over here and then we switched to the bubble bags and it was a game changer. So if your packages are being broken, it's probably because you're packaging them incorrectly you know, and just test it in your warehouse. Um, I think Amazon has like a three foot drop, which pretty much most glass will drop at three feet, but you'll know, you'll know just by packaging it. Like if you have, if you're just bubble wrapping the outside and you have glass touching glass, it's gonna break, it's gonna break. Hey Eric, what's the best repricer should I switch from Go Aura to Seller Snap and why? So, depends on how much sales revenue you're doing. I think Aura is more of a basic repricer. So, you know, if you're doing 30,000 or less a month, then Aura is probably suitable for you. But once you start breaking, you know, that 25, 30, $35,000 threshold, you definitely want to upgrade to a more advanced repricer like SellerSnap because there's just certain information and metrics that some of these less expensive, I shouldn't even say less expensive because seller snap's not expensive. It's like $500 a month, right? When in regards to what it does for your business and the growth opportunity it provides, you can't put a price tag on that. You can't, knowing that you can go to sleep at night and there's an algorithm changing your prices to make you money, can't put a price tag on that. I've used repricers that cost $15,000 a month. I find it very common that people wanna be cheap with their pricer. So they use like, be cool, which is like entry level. If you're doing maybe $1,000 a month, you should have like a be cool, right? And then I think go or the cutoff's like 25, $30,000 a month. And then you wanna to advance to say a seller snap. Yo, Carlos. What's up, buddy? How are you? Do you wanna turn your phone? Uh, this way, is that better? Yeah, man, how are you? I'm doing good, man. Just uh, got done doing three pallets myself today. Nice. Yeah, so 
do a little hustle before I go back to work on the weekend, but also so I can celebrate with my friend this evening for Marine Corps birthday. Nice, so, man. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I see you guys got the little bonfire, little bonfire going there. in the back. Yes, sir. That's cool, man. That's cool. Uh, I bet you're enjoying that Houston weather out there because it's cold as all hell out here, man. It's, <laughs> it's like 40 degrees. It's like 35 degrees this morning. Man, it's nice over here. In the morning, it's nice and cool. Then it gets to like mid seventies during the day. Then cools back down. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, man. But uh, so what? What did you? Did you have an LTL carrier pick those up today? So I got them. I got them all scheduled today. They're gonna pick them up tomorrow. Nice, man. So I used, nice. uh, I think, three different care. No, two different carriers. Mm -hmm. um, finally figured out this hazmat problem that I had. Yeah. As, as far as uh, sending freight. Yes. Um, basically, per DOT law, limited quantity shipments do not require an emergency contact number and other hazmat information, but it's the company's policy that they have that. So mm. it's kind of like, all right, well, let me go find a number for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so cool. once I once I found a number, somebody who deals with the hazmat that I'm that I'm sending in, they had an emergency contact uh, link on their website, and I just put that in there. Yeah, yeah. Worked out, worked out just fine. Nice man, nice man. You're crushing it, man. You really are. The the growth I've seen. You know, I've not. I've got to know you pretty well in the past. What maybe eight months or so, six yeah. to eight months. And I know, months. you know, you've been you've been not only scaling sales wise, but also knowledge. You know, you've become a lot more knowledgeable of the industry, which is very important. No, absolutely. Like every time I, especially with this hazmat, because I'm kind of niching down a little bit. So I have maybe six or eight SKUs that are making up ninety percent of my sales. Yeah, like I, I have yeah. very few SKUs that are bringing in these sales, but I'm sending in a ton of them. So, yeah. you know, and I've meant, I know somebody was mentioned something about the restock limits. So what I found out, just just me personally, um, with these few SKUs that I have, I'm sending in smaller smaller quantities more frequently. Yes, right, keeping that keeping that inventory down no more than thirty days. I yes. think right now my inventory is like 19 days, but my yeah. turn rate is like 30.2. Oh, that's really good. Wait, yeah, 3.2 so or 30.2? 30. 30.2. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So, and it's just because I'm, the SKUs that I'm sending are just moving right now. Yeah. So, you know, keep your inventory down, uh, clear out all your stranded, uh, get rid of SKUs that you're no longer using, mm -hmm. and just smaller, more frequent shipments. And it's been yeah. working out every every week or so. I'm getting a few more hundred added to my inventory, my restock limit. So it's working. Yeah, it's up from there, man. It's like uh, I think it's Pareto's principle where it talks about the 80 20 rule, right? Where 20 percent of your products are going to generate, you know, 80 percent of, of your sales. And that sounds like it's yeah. true for you. You got some heavy hitters and then the other stuff is just right. kind of make it happen yeah i got a i got a couple new accounts this week that i just put in some small orders in just to test them out to see how the, the SKUs do and if they work out great then just put in a larger order you know in a few more weeks nice man nice it's working bro. out yeah i just man. wanted to chime in man i'm gonna get back to a buddy over here uh wish everybody luck all right carlos man appreciate you my friend i'll see you monday yes sir all right bye Carlos is a good guy. Do you think it's too late to start RA or should a beginner start with private label? I definitely don't think a beginner should start with private label. I think RA is a great place to start. It'll teach you a lot about the marketplace, a lot about the fees, a lot about seller central, all these things that you're going to actually try to figure out the hard way when you do private label, right? Because you're not going to understand all of the, just everything there's to know, right? How to deal with customer support, uh, how to create cases, how to understand your payments and your disbursements, how to understand Amazon's fee structure with referral fees and oversize and, you know, small and light program and hazmat and apparel and footwear. So all these different things, you're going to have absolutely no idea about that. So you're just going to be winging it. So if you dive right into private label and you hear stories about it all the time, uh, we have our own stories, right? 
It took us maybe three or four private label products before we found success with a private label product. So like, I would encourage you to start just selling on Amazon. Sell products that people trust already. It's gonna teach you a lot about selling on Amazon. You're gonna learn so much in those couple months that when you do create your private label product, you're gonna have a lot more knowledge of the industry and be able to create potentially more successful product than you would have created if you just started right with private label. I firmly believe that. What have you done when you find more products and deals than you have funds to buy it with? So a leveraged credit, absolutely leverage credit. Um, if you want to send me a private message as well, I have a great funding opportunity for you, uh, a company that we've done business with in the past who's helped us and helped some other sellers we know. They provide funding at very reasonable interest rates. I'm talking five to 8%, depending on your credit score, depending on how much money you're requesting. So, you know, you definitely want to leverage credit. You also want to leverage net terms. And net terms is when essentially a company will give you the inventory basically on consignment, right? So it's like, hey, keep this inventory for 30 days. You pay me back after 30 days. Hits. So that allows you to start selling the inventory on Amazon and then pay them back with the money that you made from selling their inventory. What about drop shipping? I honestly think I give it 18 months before Amazon completely removes it. You know, I've heard nightmare stories, nightmare stories of people's accounts getting suspended doing, you know, millions of dollars a year and it gets suspended and they just can't get it back. It's impossible to get it back. You gotta look at it from Amazon's perspective. And I think a lot of people have trouble doing that, looking at things from Amazon's perspective, because you see this huge conglomerate. You think they should favor the seller when, when they have a marketplace with people who are trying to scam and hustle them all the time. Let's say you owned a business, right? And someone else was buying your products and shipping them in different boxes to your customers. So you have this nice box, just like Amazon does. It says Amazon on it. It's got the Amazon tape. It's got some advertisements. Right, but then someone orders that product and it shows up to the customer who ordered it in a Walmart box or Target box or Marshall's box or Costco box or Sam's Club box or BJ's box. You know, it's not good for business from their end. So they're they're really cracking down here. Talk to a lot of heavy hitters in the industry and they're they're making the move out of dropshipping because it's not a sustainable long long term business. I'm all about sustainability. Albert asked our top student, how much will he do in sales this year? Our top student will finish the year at about 12 to 13 million um, in sales and annual revenue. When we started with him, he was doing four to five. So he's nearly three X his business, which is pretty fucking impressive if you ask me. You know, I actually, I was just talking to him yesterday and um, he's been teetering right at that million dollar and 30 days mark and he finally just crushed it. He was super amped and I was like, man, I'm so excited for you, man. Like to think back when, when we first started guiding him, like, I don't know what it was, maybe 15 months ago, you know, and this guy just took what we showed him in ran with it. He ran with it and he took it and he's continuing to grow and continuing to scale. Those are the people that I love to work with. Whether I start helping you and you're doing $1,000 a month or you're doing $10,000 a month or you're doing $100,000 a month or you're already doing half a million, you know, three quarters million a month. The people who are going to see the most success are the people who take what we tell them to do and they just run with it. Like Carlos, for example. When I first met Carlos, he was doing a couple thousand dollars a month in sales. Now he's, you know, two or three, if not four X that because he's just, he shows up to the calls, he pays attention, he takes action, he's committed. So with, with that attitude, regardless of what industry you're in, when you have that attitude, that unbreakable attitude, that undefeatable attitude, that attitude that's gonna take you to the next level, you can achieve anything. There's nothing that's taken off the plate for you. It's all available. Anything you wanna do is available to you if you're willing to put in the work to achieve it. Because what separates people who are successful and the people who are not successful is action, right? The people who do not achieve the goals that they set out for themselves most likely is because they lacked action. They were unwilling to take action in some portion of their life that prevented them from achieving the greatness that they set out to achieve, plain and simple. The only difference between say me and you is A, maybe I got started and you didn't. Right? Or the only difference between you and the next guy is that you're spending 30 hours a week doing something that you want to build as a side business and they're spending five. It's so simple. It's straightforward. 
It comes down to commitment and taking action. If you can do those, set out to achieve what you wanted to achieve, I promise you, you can do it. There's nothing that I wanted bad enough in my life that I wasn't able to attain, right? There are things that I am still reaching for that I haven't achieved yet, but I guarantee you when we touch base next month, I'll achieve something new. Next year, I would have achieved something new. That's on my list and I just check them off as I go. You can do that as well. Nothing is too far from reach if you want it bad enough. My products were sent to Amazon and they said they weren't labeled, but did label them 100 units not labeled. Yeah, maybe you labeled the wrong label. Maybe you put in the wrong ASIN when you sent it. You know, that's an Amazon issue. Oh, you gotta contact Amazon about that. Just off the top of my head. Yeah, maybe you put the incorrect label on it, right? And that's definitely a possibility. I've done that in the past where I put the incorrect label on it. It's, a, it's an Amazon issue. You gotta contact seller support. And, and I would ask for a picture, have them send an image of the product, right? They'll do that for you. What else we got, Chia? I received an intellectual property complaint, uh, counterfeit, got it from Walmart, new ethos thing, scares me, I'm kind of new, all positive feedback, no defect, but these scary to lose selling on Amazon. This is part of the business, part of the business. You just have to know how to deal with them, right? And I understand it's scary, it's scary for us still. You know, our account health, if you saw, you'd probably have a heart attack. But what we do is we have systems and, pro and processes in place where if we do get an intellectual property complaint or you sold this new complaint or whatever, an expiration complaint, whatever the account health issue is, we address it. We submit a plan of action and we go about our business. We go about continuing to scale because we know that we're operating within Amazon's terms of service. Really, that's what's going to help you right? When it comes to these complaints, if you continue to operate within terms of service, and if you do fuck up for whatever reason, and they ask you to submit a plan of action, what they want you to do is admit it. They want you to admit it. Every single plan of action that we fix for a seller that reaches out to us and it's like, hey, my account got suspended. I submitted this plan of action. They're not accepting it. When we read it, it's always they're blaming somebody else. It's like, well, the distributor sent me this or, or my employee did this instead of just being like, no, this this is what I did. This is what I'm doing to fix it. And this is why it won't happen again. You know, you got to separate your emotion, your business owner. And even if you're just operating out of your garage or storage unit, keep in mind you're a business owner. It's super important to keep that at the forefront of your mind because it's easy to get emotional and emotions don't solve problems. Action do. I'm 18 and want to start an Amazon account. Where do I start? So go right here on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Amazon lit and search create an Amazon account. And there's literally a step-by-step -step video that shows you how to set up an Amazon account. And once you have the Amazon account set up, I would encourage you to literally just start scanning. There's an app on your phone you could download. It's called the Amazon Sellers app. I would just encourage you to start scanning that and learning about some things, right? Learning about BSR, best sellers rank. Learning about Keepa. Keepa is crucial. We have another phenomenal video on our YouTube channel just all about Keepa. Learn about Keepa. Right, learn about some of these things and then make some buys, right? Based on what you've learned, spend fifty dollars. You know, I'm about to I, I gotta get out of here, but the the last thing I was gonna say is <laughs> it's crazy because when you talk to someone who's trying to start a business, they're so fucking cheap. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And I get it because I've been there, right? But it's like it's like let's say you got a thousand dollars in your bank and you need 10% of it to start this business, a hundred bucks, and you're like, Oh man, like this is ten percent of my my net worth right now like this is i'm not going to do it i'm just not going to do it it's too scary i'm not going to do it but a lot of people they have no problem taking 10 percent of that net worth and buying a new pair of nikes or buying the new air jordans taking their girlfriend out to dinner and a movie I'm not saying you can't do those things you can definitely do those things but you got to prioritize right and also those same people have no problem going to college and getting 50, 60, 80, $100,000 in debt. Come a f***ing librarian. Nothing against librarians, but let's be realistic here. Do you want to risk a small percentage of your income to possibly build something for yourself? Or you want to go invest 80, 90, $50,000 in a business degree? We're literally this year, tens of thousands of people graduated with a business degree. Look at the average salary for someone with a degree in business. You're talking starting 
40, maybe 45,000. Fucking nuts. You can't even, how is some, someone supposed to live in today's day and age on $45,000? That's crazy to me. That's crazy to me that you literally go to school for four to five years and you leave that school 100K in debt, making $45,000 a year. And then out of that $45,000 a year, you got your car bill, right? You got your lease, right? Let's say that's $300 a month. And then you got your rent and other, depending on where you live. If you live in New York, you're talking $1,500 a month, right? If you live down maybe Midwest, you're talking or South, Southeast, you're talking whatever, $800 a month. Then you got food and gas. And then if you have kids, don't even get me started. If you got kids, you got to put food in their mouths. It's just crazy. It's crazy. Well, listen, everybody, this has been a lot of fun. I love spending my evenings with you. Hit me on the Instagram DMs. If you got additional questions I wasn't able to address on this. Also, make sure you turn on notifications for Instagram because I do these about once a week, once every 10 days. So if you got any questions, we'd love to have you back here. Also, if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, check it out on a value there. On a value, ton of information. So about to head home, have some dinner. Uh, enjoy your evening. Stay grateful. Stay with. <laughs>